Hi folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between 100% black, rich black, and registration black, when you should use each of those colors, and then ultimately I'll show you a pre-flight in Acrobat where you can swap those colors from one another. So before we get started, if you use either Adobe InDesign or Adobe Illustrator, you want to change a setting real quick. Uh, I have here some swatches that I created, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But if I go into the InDesign preferences and I come down here to Appearance of Black, before you do any design, or actually before, right after you do an install of InDesign or Illustrator, you want to go into this setting here and you want to change this. It's usually by default it says display all blacks as rich black and output all blacks as rich black. You want to change that to display all blacks, or all blacks accurately and output all blacks accurately. And you can see a little example of that below how this one on the left is a little bit more gray looking as opposed to the darker, denser, rich black. But when you're doing design work, you always want to make sure that that is set so that everything is displaying and outputting accurately. Otherwise, what you see is not always what you're going to get. So I'll hit OK there, and I'll show you an Illustrator also. You go up to the Settings, Appearance of Black, and then you want to change that. So this one here is set by default as Rich Black, and I want to change those over to Output Blacks accurately. So that way, if you're using either Illustrator or InDesign, you uh, are going to see exactly the way that the black is going to output. So that's very important when you're doing design work. You don't have to do it in Photoshop, obviously, because Photoshop is um, it's not vector-based. So it's going to just basically be a, um, a pixelated image of whatever you're designing, and there's going to be different spots that are going to be... Uh, a gradient of black so that doesn't really matter but in Illustrator and in InDesign you want to set those so anyway now that we have that set up I have my W key here clicked on so that you can see that the output here so the first one you can you might not be able to tell but if you zoom in real close between the two you can see that those two colors if I put them or butt them up right next to each other you can see that those two colors are slightly different from one another. The one on the top here looks more gray, the one on the middle looks more black. And you can actually see it a little bit better as I zoom out there. So the top one here, if I click on my separations uh, preview, which if you go up to window, output, separations preview, and then change this from off to separations, this shows you all of the different colors, how they're gonna output and then you can obviously click them off one by one to see the differences as, as uh, each color channel is going to um, output. But anyway, if I go over the 100% black swatch here, you can see it's set to 0, 0, 0, 100. My rich black is set to 60, 40, 40, 100. And registration is set to 100, 100, 100, 100. So why would you use one versus the other or why is it important? Well, if you're printing on an offset press, you're going to have four different ink stations for each color, CMYK. If your registration is a little bit off between your colors, you're going to notice it. So if I click on my little sample here, you can see this is basically an example of what registration looks like coming off of an offset press. On the left here, this is a 100% uh, black image only, and then this one here is a mixture of CMYK. Obviously, if you're printing with one color, you don't have to worry about registration because it's only one color. You're only using one station of the press. But on a four color image, you're going to have a mixture of all four of those colors. So if your alignment is not 100% right on top of each other, you're going to have a little bit of the cyan showing or the magenta or the yellow or the black where they don't line up properly. So that's usually not a huge problem except when you're talking about very fine lines and text. So if I show you here, this is 
an example of what plain black looks like for very small text and then this is what rich black is going to look like for very small text and you can see on the right how everything looks a little fuzzy as opposed to the left and that's because the registration is just not 100 percent perfect and to be honest with you dealing with offset presses it's never going to be so you're always going to have this kind of this little haze or this fuzz to uh, cnyk uh, text especially when you get down to very very small text like this it's not so noticeable if you had like a big block of text like this how large these font sizes are but when you get uh, smaller and this obviously this is an example of what something that would be zoomed in very close so if you had say like a six point text or eight point text uh, ten point text those are very very small fonts you're gonna get this kind of this haze look to your uh, to your prints and you don't and we don't want that so basically the option is change that from a rich black mixture a registration black mixture to 100% black and then you avoid that happening now most printers have a rich black set to 60 40 40 100 however you want to talk to your print service provider because they may use a different mixture for rich black maybe their printing press works a little bit differently they're one color is a little bit uh, denser than the others or how they have their printing plates set. So you always want to talk to your print service provider first before setting up your rich black color in your design work. Um, so if you're ever kind of in doubt of what it should be, talk to your to, to your uh, print service provider first and they'll be able to guide you a little bit better. 60, 40, 40 is just kind of, or 100, 60, 40, 40, 100 is kind of just like a, a standard rich black mix. I've seen different mixtures uh, and especially if you're talking about using a rich black or um, something like a warm black or something like that, you can get into a whole big ball of wax with that. But if you want to have a nice, dense, dark looking black, 60, 40, 40, 100 is kind of your standard go to. And then registration black should only be used for things like crop marks or um, registration marks. So something like this, if you're setting this file up and you have crop marks out here you have your registration marks and this is basically just for the aid of the offset uh, press operator so that way he can make adjustments to his paper he can move things around he can try to get those colors to line up properly but you do not want to have a big block of color like this in a 100 percent mix for all four because Basically what that'll do is it'll kind of oversaturate the sheet of paper and it'll create a kind of a muddy look to it. So that's why instead of re uh, registration black, you should be using rich black for big blocks and then 100% black for text. So that's kind of a rundown of how the three different uh, colors work from each other and when you should use each one. Uh, if you have any questions about that, specifically put them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer that. So now that we understand the difference between all three colors, how do we change those colors? So I have here a flyer and if I pop open my, um, if I go to print production, go to output preview and I hover over my color here, this is set to 100% process black. So normally this would be okay, especially if you're using a digital printer um, to print these. Most digital printers print a pretty solid looking 100% uh, black. However, if we're using maybe an uncoated sheet of paper and it's being printed offset, you wanna kind of give it a little bit more um, a depth to it. You wanna make a nice deep dark black. You're probably gonna wanna change this over to a rich black. So how do we do that? If you're doing this directly in Illustrator or InDesign, you can just pop open the file and you can select whatever block of uh, uh, color or color here. In this case, we just want to select this and then we're going to change it over to our, our uh, CMYK rich black mixture. But what if you have an, a PDF that's already made up for you and you just want to change it directly in Acrobat? I have a pre-flight here that I've made. So if I go into my print production, go to my pre-flight, I have a couple, couple different ones here that I've set up. 
So this one here is 100% black and we want to change it to rich black. So I have one here. If I click on edit. I'm using the fix up here for map colors. This is a similar fix up that I've used in the past to transform colors to from a CMYK mix maybe to, over to a spot color mix. In this case, we're only just going to be changing some of the black values here. Quick comment here on what it does. It finds 100% black vector objects and converts them over to a 60, 40, 40, 100 rich black mixture. We're going to use a source color model of CMYK. Um, and actually, before I get any further, I should note that you need to have this file set up as a CMYK only. This won't work if this is set to RGB. So you want to change this from a profile or uh, using the profile convert to CMYK only if this file has been given to you. Obviously, I created this, so I already know it's set in CMYK. So anyway, if I go back in here, we want to find something that has a mixture of 0, 0, 0, 100, which is our 100% process black. And we want to have a tolerance of 0 because we want to find just that 100% black. And we're going to change this over to our CMYK 60, 40, 40, 100 mix. We're going to apply this only to vector objects. And if you don't have that option here, I think by default it says either all images or all vector and text objects. I created one here called vector objects. And if I click on the little edit button here, this is called, what I've named this is a, uh, a pre-flight, it's a check, and this is called vector objects. And basically what it is, is uh, under the, uh, where is it, uh, page description, you come down here and says is vector object there it is and you click add and it'll show up down here and basically you just want to have it as is true what that does is it's going to find anything that is a vector object and says yes this is this is true this is a vector object and then it'll apply whatever settings you set up here in this step and make the change if you leave this on all images it's obviously not going to do anything because your uh, image is not going to change. And then you can set it to all vector and text objects here. However, we want to set this up independently because let's say we have um, some text down here that is pure black because, or uh, excuse me, 100% uh, process black. And we don't want to change that. We just want to make this area nice and dark because if we change the text here to rich black we're going to have issues with the registration like I explained so we want to have this apply to only vector objects not vector and text objects so I hope that explains it a little bit you hit OK come back in here and I'm going to click fix and it will prompt you to save I'm going to go ahead and call this underscore converted I'll hit save and it went ahead and applied it to three objects on the page and now if I hover over, you can see this black is set to 60, 40, 40, 100. If I open up my original file here and I compare the two, let me close this out. If I compare the two, you can see how this second one here looks a little bit more grayish. And this one here has a much darker, denser black to it. And that's because this now is rich black and this is 100% process black. So that's how to change it that way. But what if we want to change it from rich black to 100% black? I have a different file here. I have some text. If I zoom in over it, I go to my output preview and I hover over here. You can see this has a mixture of 70, 64, 63, 62. So this is essentially another rich black type mix. It's not the same as that 60, 40, 40, 100, but that's the mixture that, we're, that we have here. So now we want to change this, but we don't want to change any of the other elements on the page. We want to leave the images alone. And let's just say these, uh, where it says book now, if this was 100% black in the background, or this was a rich black, and we don't want to change that. We just want to change the text because like I mentioned, we don't want to have registration issues, right? Especially because some of this text is a little bit small. 
it's going to be hard to register that on the press with all four colors on top of each other. So if I go into back into my print, print production, go to pre-flight, I've created one for that as well. This is to correct rich black to 100% black. If I click edit, this is going to convert rich black text to 100% black. I'm going to use the same map colors as I did before. I'm going to change this from, or uh, uh, leave this as CMYK, but I'm going to change this mixture with 0, 0, 0, 100, and now I'm going to put in these values here. 75.5, 66.5, 64.5, 97.5, with a tolerance of 36. The tolerance is important because, like I said, this mixture that we just looked at here wasn't exactly 60, 40, 40, 100. It was a little bit different. And even these values here don't directly coincide with what those values were. But by using the tolerance, what that'll do is it'll look for anything slightly above or slightly below. It'll find it, and then it'll make that change. So we're going to make the uh, destination here, CMYK also. And then this is where we're going to convert it to 100% black by going 0, 0, 0, 100. And then we want to create this, or apply this, excuse me, to only text objects. And again, I've set this up uh, with a... Uh, edit, uh, edit check here so there's one here called is text if you just type it in here is text so it's going to f basically find any object on the page that is set up as text and then you want to set that to is true so that way when the, the pre-flight is run it's going to look and find only text objects only and then I'll make that uh, change to those objects and leave all the other objects alone so if I hit OK, come back here, hit Fix. We're going to run it, and it prompts you to save, and I'll just call this one Converted as well. Hit Save, and you can see it apply it to 20 objects on the page. And now if I zoom in here and hover over these blocks of text, it is now 100% Process Black. And if I deselect the Process Black channel, you can see that all the text on the page disappears. So now when we send this over to be printed, especially on an offset press, this will only print with the black channel and leave the CMYK, or the, excuse me, the cyan, magenta, and yellow off. So that way we won't have any kind of registration issues. So I hope that helps everybody understand a little bit more about the differences between the colors, the, you know, when you should apply it, when you shouldn't, um, I just touched on using the registration color obviously for crop marks, but that's essentially the only time you should use that. If you had this set to uh, registration color for this text, it would print so dense and dark you would have uh, a really kind of a muddy looking print that if you're running it on offset, some of the ink might run because of dry times depending on how the press is set up. So. Avoid that at all possible, except for situations using it for crop marks and registration marks, which is always why when you you do something in uh, Illustrator or InDesign and when you export your settings here, if you're going to export this as a PDF, and let's just call this a uh, test or whatever, um, with your marks and bleeds, this is always your registration marks and your crop marks are always going to be set up as 100% registration color because that way, when it goes to an offset press or digital press, whatever it's being run at, you can see if all the colors are lining up properly or not. But those are the only situation that's the only situation you should apply registration black to. Otherwise, you should use rich black for big blocks of background and then 100% black for text. Some videos out there might tell you differently, but in my experience, that's how I always set things up. Um, and that's coming from somebody who's has a, you know, a bit of familiarity with the printing process and how everything works. So again, hope, hope that uh, helps some folks out. If you have any questions specifically, please leave those down in the comments below. And uh, I hope to catch you guys all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.